Hello, everybody. Here we are with another tea time. And this time, um, I'm going to present to you some things that are interesting. And then, please, don't hesitate to put your questions about anything. Limes, Bartonella, Babesia, um, a breast implant illness, uh, and medical things into the um, chat. So here we go. This is what I do. By the way, I was this week, I am now editor-in-chief of five medical journals. Um, <clears throat> not four, as before. So as you know, this is all to help people understand things. And it, I don't charge anything, and I don't do anything for any kind of profit motive. It is just to teach and have people understand. Um, I think that this is just a disclaimer. We know about that. So let me address some things that I get asked a lot. Make sure you use the correct antifungal. Diflucan, nystatin, only work in single cell molds. All of these single cell molds are yeasts. Spornox, which is the brand name, Ituconazole is the generic, and VFend, which is the uh, name of the company, Boriconazole is the uh, generic, all work against toxic molds. And that includes the yeasts, but it also includes aspergillus, penicillium, stachybotrys, etc. For those of you who like to get into Dr. Gould, no, your hair won't fall out, your teeth won't fall out, and your liver won't fry up with Spornox or VFAN. So here is the kind of idea that you get. Here on the left is fluconazole, but that's also nice statin. Uh, a different one. They only treat one, but itraconazole treats all of these, all of them. It's better to use that. Okay, and how safe is it? So here's a study showing that itraconazole is a broad spectrum, et cetera, but look at what it says in the last sentence. Itraconazole has been well tolerated with doses of up to 400 milligrams a day being generally free of adverse effects. And here's another one. <clears throat> Itraconazole, also known as Spornox, etc. And it has been in clinical use for 35 years with an established safety record. So safety of voriconazole and amphotericin B. So it says here, these clinical diseases are rather difficult to cure by antimycotics, which means antifungals, where they, whereby the azoles, okay, such as voriconazole and liposomal amphotericin B, give relatively the best results. Okay, here is voriconazole. Look at the title. The pharmacokinetics of are not altered in critically ill patients with acute on chronic liver failure and continuous renal replacement therapy. It's safe in those who have, you know, chronic liver failure and they're looking to have their liver replaced. What do you take? What are the medications? You need phosphatidylserine. And I, I recommend the one from Claire Laboratories. It's known as Cerebella. Look at what it says. Compared with the effects of placebo, this is from a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized study. Compared with the effects of placebo, which was ineffective, phosphatidylserine supplementation produced significant improvement in short-term memory recall, immediate memory, vocabulary skills, and ability to recall words, attention, and vigilance. There you go, 500 milligrams. Melatonin, three milligrams. I've seen people come to me and say, I'm taking 50 milligrams, 20 milligrams. No, studies show, and here you go with the study, and if you can read it, it's down at the very bottom. Recent studies confirm the benefits of melatonin 
in reducing cellular damage generated as a result of the metabolism of toxic molds. Mel and then the second part, melatonin's ability to protect neurons, those are brain cells, from molecular damage due to a wide variety of substances, including mycotoxins. B complex, take one a day. Now, the melatonin I get also from um, Claire Labs, as I do the B complex one daily. It says genomic and non genomic methylation for those of you who have done the testing. And at the bottom is the study. So this is not opinion. Remember what my medical school said. In God we trust, everyone else has to show data. Furthermore, evidence from human research clearly shows that both significant proportions of the population of developed countries, that includes the United States, suffer from deficiencies or insufficiencies of in one or more group of this these vitamins, the B complex, okay? And it helps preserve brain health. Now, Magnesium, 1,000 milligrams twice a day, all right? Magnesium, 11th most common element in the body. It's the master mineral for 350 enzyme systems plus, and therefore playing a role in the majority of the body's metabolic process. 80% of people are deficient in this, in magnesium. And magnesium binding sites have been detected on 3,751 on 3, human proteins that are essential for building, repairing, and maintaining your body's cells. So all these places all over the internet who claim this and claim that and claim the other, those are just opinions. This is fact. 95% of the magnesium in the cell is in the mitochondria. And it's a cofactor for the, a substance known as adenosine triphosphate, ADP, ATP, which is, plays a role in energy metabolism, the process by which we as humans break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats and convert them into energy, okay? And ATP is the energy currency of the cell, the primary product made by your cell's energy factory. What's that energy factory in each cell called? It's the mitochondria. By the way, we as humans, we need vitamin C and magnesium is required for magne magnesium, for vitamin C to be absorbed, okay? And it's also needed for zinc, potassium, vitamin B complex, calcium, and vitamin D. Without magnesium, you can't absorb these, or you have difficulty absorbing these. All right, so here it is. Look at look at all these, and you can quickly um, and easily see what magnesium does here. Okay. So, um, sorry about that. Let me get this way over here or oh, there you go okay so now vitamin d well vitamin d is essential it's it really should be called something else but they named it vitamin d back in the 1930s okay it's very helpful in cognitive impairment in vascular dementia whoops here we go Thank you. Vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, and other conditions that develop due to brain cell malfunction or brain cell death. And low vitamin D levels are associated with increased cognitive impairment, diabetes, mellitus, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and respiratory diseases. Folks, it, these are essential. Number six, Omega Q plus max, and you take two daily, and contains DHEA and EPA from squid, not from fish, because fish contain the the oil is extracted from the liver of fish, 
and this contains mercury. L-carnitine, curcumin, coenzyme Q10, resveratrol. These were all developed by a colleague of mine who's now passed on, Dr. Steve Sinatra, who's a genius. He's a cardiologist from Connecticut. Now, what else should you take? A probiotic. What kind? Spore forming. The effective treatment for SIBO is these probiotics. They're called megaspore biotic, and you take two every day. It increases circulating T and B cell lymphocytes. It shifts from inflammatory to adaptive. It improves what we call pattern recognition to curb autoimmune and allergic immune response, and it reduces the incidence of irritable bowel syndrome. So here's an example. Here is a young mother, June 10th, 2021, pre-artoconazole, after artoconazole, September. So three months, July, August, September, okay? And look at the difference. Now, I think that that is important. Probiotics. Publications from Reading University in London with the Food Safety Authority of the United Kingdom, that's the, F the British FDA, it showed that less than 10% of the usual commercial strains of lactobacilli and bifidobacterium and probiotics are able to get to the colon. And University of California Davis examined 16 probiotics from local, from local stores to check if the strains claimed on the label match those that were found in the bottle. Only one of the 16, all right? And there are no studies that have shown that 200 billion CFUs is more effective to 10 million, et cetera. So folks, this is why I urge you to use, I've researched this, I've spent decades, et cetera, I've published over 100 studies, please do what is right, not what opinions and anecdotes tell you on websites on the internet. Now, here is vitamin C. Again, I get this from Claire Labs. Our bodies can't, cannot make and cannot store vitamin C. So we've got to get it from outside, but and almost all fruits and vegetables have some vitamin C but you'd have to eat huge quantities and that we can't do. I'm talking about 40 to 50 oranges. You can't do that. It helps in depression, especially in kids, reduces uric acid levels, reduces the risk for brain cancer, and it lowers lipids. Okay, and here's a new study that came out in November of last year, so uh, 10, 10 months ago, 11% of nearly 60 tested dietary supplements actually contain an accurate amount of the key ingredients listed on the label. 40% did not contain a detectable amount of the ingredients at all. In other words, all those supplements you're buying over the internet and, and from these websites, et cetera, 40% don't contain anything at all. What about glutathione? Oh, it's great. We need to give you IV glutathione. Well, here's a study that shows if you have gliotoxin mycotoxins, it'll, in it'll increase the toxicity of gliotoxin. Don't take glutathione or NAC if you're positive for gliotoxin mycotoxins. How about mercury and fish? I showed you a little bit ago why you should have fish oil from squid. Well, look at how many, how much mercury there is in all these fish that we eat commonly, okay? Ahi tuna, etc. And in your diet, avoid at all cost anything that has artificial flavoring, coloring, preservatives, sweeteners, soy, 
Don't eat canned food because the lining of the can has BPA, bisphenol A, a chemical. And don't microwave anything in a plastic container. Don't eat bread and breakfast cereals, cake, ice cream, other sweets, frozen or packaged meals, soft drinks, fruit drinks, pizza, salty snacks, packaged baked goods, chicken nuggets, fish nuggets, bottle dressing. Eat healthy like your great, great grandparents did. And by the way, for those of you, this is the study. Look down at the bottom. You can read it. It's published. The study said one has to admit that today the risk of acute intoxications of humans is low, at least in developed countries where the amount of mycotoxins in foods, food items is controlled by the authority. No, we do not get mycotoxins from foods. And so, let me show you. The amounts of mycotoxins tested in foods have been shown in many studies to be below what is called the tolerable daily intake, TDI. And that's set by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, European Food and Safety Authority, and the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, World Health Organization Joint Expert Committee on Food Additives. Now, here's a study to illustrate a worst-case exposure. Look at the last bottom three lines. An adult with a body weight of 170 pounds would have to com consume, eat at one time, 28 ounces of oat flakes, about 14 pounds of oatmeal at one time, or 19 and a half ounces of wheat, which is about 20 slices of bread, all of it moldy, to be affected. Obviously, it's not in the gut. The latest study on the test for mycotoxins says, and here's the study, and here's the journal it was published in, and this is a study that my microlab does. The ELISA method to detect mycotoxins in human serum comes with significant accuracy, precision, and specificity. What else can I tell you? Here's a study by these people who say all these organic acid tests, oat tests, claim this and claim they find a gut bacteria, fungi imbalances, but do they don't measure what they say. And then... The chemical antibodies in blood versus chemical antibodies in urine. Okay, so they're looking at urine, but this is what's left the body. You should measure what is in the body, not what's left the body. So don't measure chemicals, mycotoxins that have come out of the body and have left the body. Measure what is in the body. And here's a popular test. It was, this was pub, published in this medical journal, and it's the GI map. Look at the right-hand corner. The specificity of the GI map is 26%. What does that tell you about the GI map? What's the other side of the coin? 74% is inaccurate. Okay, here's another myth. Mycotoxins colonize the gut, so you have to pull them out with binders. That is pure myth. And here's another study, if you don't believe the first one. Physical strategies, such as application of absorbance agents, such as binders, presented no sufficient effect against mycotoxins. And here's another study. Binders rely on the absorption of mycotoxins from the gut, right? And these include kaolinite, clays, activated charcoal, zeolite, bentonite, etc. They neutralize only aflatoxins, and those aflatoxins are not found indoors. They are ineffective in all other mycotoxins. They don't affect you. In addition, they also bind vital vitamins as well as 
macro and micro elements. What are those? Those are like zinc, magnesium, etc. Here's tests that have no medical evidence that they have anything to do. The urine testing for mycotoxins, the O test, the HLA-DR genetic test, the visual contrast sensitivity test, MSH, 3-4, C3A, C4A. Folks, these are myths. There is no medical evidence. Remember what I told you about medical school? They taught me, in God we trust, everyone else has to show data. There's no data. Here's what a patient says. I've watched all of your videos and I very much want to use your treatment paradigm. I was formerly seeing a functional medicine doctor, was trained by Neil Nathan, but have not made practice on this protocol for the last three years. Folks, it takes six months to get well on the program that I've shared with you. Here's another one. Out of the past 12 months, I've been sharing the My Micro Lab website with all my mold remediation clients and recommend that they take the My Micro Lab test. I've learned so much from Dr. Campbell, and I'm so appreciative for the education and providing a real solution. I think it's finally having an impact with all the mold doctors, quote unquote, who follow Shoemaker's useless binder protocol. I see many doctors, including Tom O'Brien and Jack Wolfson, now discussing mold more and more. I think Shoemaker has single-handedly held up the health of many millions of people around the world. Dr. Campbell is unraveling the damage Shoemaker and his followers have caused. Go to my Michael Labs YouTube channel, 60 different videos that you can watch about treatment, about Lyme disease, autism, autoimmune disorders, multiple sclerosis, breast implant illness, Alzheimer, Parkinson's, PANS, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, POTS, and others. And if you want questions, here it is. Just email me. Or at the very, very bottom in yellow, go to my website. All right. So let's start with the chat. Okay. Do you build tolerance, Dr. Cronazol? Was on for five months, level still high. Need to get my breast implants out. Will I have built up? No, you do not build up tolerance to atrocosol. If one has mycotoxins and is also suspected to suffer parallel from elect EHS, electrohypersensitivity, well, it's e well, anyway, it has several names. EMF is more appropriate. Yes, it would work because there are published studies showing that EMF is part of the problem and you get rid of that with the treatment. What is the treatment? Folks, it is four parts. Number one, get the patient away from the toxin or the toxin away from the patient. Number two, itraconazole. Number three, all the, the uh, vitamins, and supplements I just told you about. And number four, make sure your nutrition is the right kind. Are binders good for heavy metals? If not, what is? No, binders don't have a single effect. And I'm a toxicologist as well as a clinical immunologist. They don't have any effect. You have to be chelated for heavy metals. Binders is just a myth. If you're unable for any reason to get away from the mold right away, and it takes time. Can the following atrocosal protocol with everything? No. You cannot get it better while being exposed. If one is not getting better while on atrocosal, is there a quick, credible way to determine if it's due to the efficacy of the... Yes, you should get the Spornox, because don't forget, folks, all, all every single medication that is <clears throat> not brand name, okay, is made in India or China. What does that tell you? That's enough said. And remember, it is not only atraconazole. It's making sure you're no longer exposed. It's making sure you take these specific eight supplements, and it includes the nutritional component. If you're missing out on one of these, 
It's like a table with four legs. You remove one leg, the table falls down. All right, is ALA and NAC okay? No, NAC is a precursor of glutathione. You can't take it. It'll make you worse. It'll make it more toxic. Okay, can you address the, the role of glutathione and mycotoxins? Sure. And it's in many of my webinars, especially on the brain. For example, there was a study done at Rutgers University School of Medicine that showed 70% of MS, multiple sclerosis patients, it's due to gliotoxin, okay? So you cannot use glutathione. People think that glutathione is the all encompassing, the best of everything, you need an IV, you need to take it every day. I'm so sorry. Remember, in God we trust, everybody else has to show evidence. Show me the data. What kind of research should I do to find the appropriate mold inspector remediation for my home? I know that not all of them are the same. They're not. They're very different. I recommend you go to envirohealth.co. It's run by Brantley May. And if you go to all the, the webinar videos, I've done two videos on home inspection with Brantley May. They're all available on the My Micro Labs YouTube channel. Are there any foods such as mushrooms which should be avoided? No. Are there any antioxidants that can help with micro? I don't know what it's it's microtoxicity, and this is a spelling issue. It's myco. Myco means from molds, okay? So it's mycotoxicity. Antioxidants, yes, I just mentioned them. Vitamin C is the most potent one. I know you mentioned Claire Labs. By the way, Claire is with a K, Claire Labs. But what brands for all the supplements do you recommend? Send me, a, shoot me an email and I'll send it to you. What brand of probiotics? I told you in earlier, it's mm -hmm. called Mega Spore Biotic. Our sauna is helpful. Only one kind is helpful, and that is infrared sauna. And the typical saying that I give to people is start low and increase slowly. Uh, okay. Uh, phosphatidylserine affects serotonin and dopamine. I'm already on antidepressants and I get can't get off right now. When I take the phosphatidylserine, I have derealization. Well, what do you think is causing your depression? The mycotoxins. I have psychiatrists send me serum from the patients they're seeing that don't get better on antidepressants and they are elevated in mycotoxins from my microlabs testing and then they treat them for the mycotoxins and their depression goes away. Please address, address the methylation. It's in this webinar earlier on and once you see it, and this webinar will be available on my Microlabs YouTube channel in a couple more days. Are the supplements you suggest from Clear Labs free of all GMO, such as ascorbic acid made from GMO corn? Yes. What brand and type of magnesium? I use Jigsaw Health's Mag SRT. Do my ecotoxins affect the heart? Let me explain how it works. Mycotoxins, the first place they go to is the brain. When they get to the brain, they cause demyelination. They strip myelin off the nerves. That's like the the from your lamp for your com, from your computer to the source of electricity. That wire is covered with plastic. That's like taking that plastic off. 
there's a big nerve in the body. It's called the vagus nerve. It's the 10th cranial nerve. And it, and it innervates your heart and all your insides, your gut, etc. So when you demyelinate that, you have heart rhythm problems. So you have irregular heartbeats, fast heartbeats, all kinds of problems with the heart. Do mycotoxins affect sleep? Absolutely. They cause sleep disturbance. No questions. That's been known for well over 30 years. There have been many published studies on that. What companies do you recommend we buy forms such as your sharing data that shows so many of the brands don't even contain what they're supposed to? Shoot me an email. I'll send it to you. You mentioned that glio glutathione increases toxicity gliotoxin. What exactly does that mean? My daughter's IgG serum pen, including Aspergillus fumigatus and penicillium. Well, those are molds. Those are not mycotoxins. Okay? So you need to know what mycotoxins, not molds. Okay? So thank you for your recommendation. I've taken Atricronzole for six months from December to June. And it helped to bring my, my microlabial markers down quite a bit, but some are still elevated in yellow and some orange in IgG and Ig. I've ruled out any exposure and I'm feeling much better, not 100%. Also, I take the supplements LDN, low-dose naltrexone, and eat as recommended. Should I start the, the atricronos all again? The average is six months. Some people need seven or eight. Some people get better after four. There's all kinds of differences. You've heard of people, of couples, say the couple gets the flu and one is sick for a couple of days and they're fine. The other one's in bed for a week. We're all different, thank God. Can you imagine if everybody looked like me? It'd be terrible. Aspergillus hemolysin, this was, that's a, a um, mycotoxin. This one was highest on mine. Can this one be for my breast implants? Yes. Look, indoor mycotoxins, yes, but also breast implants. My sister explained it two years ago. Um, she has improved for six weeks. But it's gone downhill since then. She's gone to many doctors, emergency rooms, hospitalized twice with no improvement. She's had some mold remediation done in her home. Her current symptoms include tachycardia, heart palpitations, dry heaving, major insomnia, anxiety, depression, choking pain, weight loss from 150 pounds to 88, feeding tube for all over a year. She had testing done at my microlab showing many mycotoxins in her body. She was given itraconazole med, but her stomach could not tolerate it. I understand it is available through IV. But how could she get that prescribed in Illinois? She suffers from agoraphobia now, too. So it is possible to get a port and have it at home? Absolutely. I've done this many times before. And if you get a port, you can use intravenous uh, medication, antifungals, such as octoconazole, spornox, voriconazole, VFEN, etc. Not only that, but in 30 years ago, Two colleagues and I published over 20, well, we published 23 studies on silicone breast implants. Then 20 years, no, it's 30 years now, in 19, <laughs> I'm getting old. In 1994, I was called by the NIH to come and present the findings from the published studies to them. And I went up to NIH in Washington, presented it to them. Six months later, they shut down the implant manufacturers and had them come back and redo and show them that they were safe. Curious, who owns my microlab and is it an American-based company? It's owned, yes, it's an American-based company and it's owned by several people. And it's not owned by me, I'm not one of the owners, just to get that straight. Do you have recommendations for detoxing mold from pets? I do not, I'm sorry. But veterinarians um, are pretty good at that, okay? So I, I it, you know, and I have pets, so I'm, I feel for you. Um, 
please uh, go to your vet with your pet. Testing nutritional genome indicates that I'm extremely sensitive to mycotoxins. Is it possible for somebody like me to generate IgE antibodies even if the levels of mycotoxins is within acceptable levels? Yes. Can mold mycotoxins cause colitis? Molds, no. Mycotoxins, yes. Mycotoxins can cause Crohn's. Uh, there's medical studies showing that mycotoxins cause ulcerative colitis. They cause Crohn disease, SIBO, and irritable bowel syndrome, and inflammatory bowel disease. Um, what type of magnesium do you recommend? As I mentioned a little bit before, I get it from Jigsaw Health, and it's called MagSRT. Can you have high levels of mycotoxin antibodies mm -hmm. present in your blood, but be asymptomatic? If so, could you be asymptomatic for your entire life? Or will mycotoxins eventually be caught? Yes, eventually some, yes, they will. There's some... That's the bell curve, folks. What are the benefits of a healthy amount of level of candida in the gut? Does itraconazole deplete candida yeast? Yes, it does. Um, it re and then as you're taking the can, you're doing that, but you're replenishing the gut microbiome with the supplements. Can mycotoxin cause a rash? on one part of the leg that comes and goes. Yes, that's mast cell activation. By the way, folks, the most common skin manifestations of mycotoxins is eczema. Do mold and mycotoxins make people more prone to candida? No, candida is actually a very weak mold. You said no for NAC with those with gliotoxins. How about ALA? ALA as well. Um, alpha lipoic acid, for, for those of you who don't know what that means. Where can I rewatch this webinar? It'll be posted on my Michael Labs YouTube channel, I guess uh, by Friday afternoon. What lab tests do you prefer that are actually reliable? Show me an, an email and I'll show you the real labs, the ones that are backed by medical and scientific studies, not by opinions on the internet. A sauna space makes a nice infrared light. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I saw an interview with a mold detecting dog. They can locate where the mold is in the house. I've heard about this too. I think that's great. Um, thank you for sharing that infrared sauna, red light, and salt halotherapy have been amazing help in addition to antifungals. Yes, that's correct. I will watch your webinars about breast implants and, and mild, but just quickly, do implants cause, create? No, implants don't create it. Implants have mold in them. You'll see the pictures of actual implants with mold in them on my breast implant webinars. Do mycotoxins affect hormones and pituitary gland? Yes, I have, I've, and they're on the My Micro Lab website. How hormones are affected by mycotoxins? There's, they can, they, mycotoxins easily cause Hashimoto's thyroiditis, imbalances in estrogen and progesterone. They lower testosterone considerably, almost down to nothing. So yes, can mycotoxins cause high blood pressure? Not directly. Which molds, mycotoxins cause childhood behavior issues? They all can because the micro, it's not molds, it's mycotoxins. And typically in children, it causes Asperger's, autism, learning disabilities, and behavioral abnormalities. Pans, pandas. Can you use acerola for vitamin C? I don't I have no idea what that is. Are mold dogs useful? Apparently, they they're pretty good. My brother's had has had COVID three times. Could he have mycotoxin toxicity? Yes. 
studies have shown that, and these are published studies, and there's a a a um, COVID vaccine group that I gave a presentation to because studies show that what happens with COVID, you stay indoors and indoors, you could have molds and mycotoxins and that's what's really making you sick. Thank you, doctor, for answering my questions. You're very welcome, anytime. Need to start Z Macrobed daily, 100 milligrams for three months for six bad bacteria. Where are these bacteria? What testing did you use? Are these valid tests? Etc. That's the first thing I would look at because six bad bacteria? That sounds fishy to me. Okay. I got my implants back after explantation surgery. There was no visible mold inside them. Does that mean they're in there regardless? No, you can't see them. Let me explain to you. Your hair is 100 microns thick. Mold spores are 2 to 4 microns. Could you see that? No. My myco showed that I'm generating IgE antibodies, but the LabCorp mold allergen test came back negative. Yes, because my myco lab tests for mycotoxins and LabCorp tests for molds. Two different things, completely different, okay? I read your uh, your food list that is allowed for the detox while taking atriconazole and the eight supplements. I'm surprised to see that you have wine allowed since wine has a lot of yeasts. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Okay. What else does wine have? Resveratrol. Resveratrol is highly useful. Several of my published studies have shown how resveratrol, which is a comes from the skin of red grapes, not white, red grapes, helps get rid of mycotoxins. There you go. How long does it take ADH to get back to normal? Six months after, treat, after the correct treatment. If mycotoxins don't directly cause blood pressure, how might they have something to do with it? Well, they deplete nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. Uh, alcohol is poison, no matter which way you put it. That's your opinion. And as my professor said, everyone has an opinion, just like everyone has a liver and a rectum. So uh, no, no, um, uh, but if you think it's uh, a poison, um, you should read the studies rather than just react because there are studies, as I mentioned, about resveratrol and the benefits of resveratrol. And that's found in red wine, not white, not beer, not any other kind of alcohol, only one red wine. All righty, folks. Well, thank you so much for listening. Remember, there's my website at the bottom, at the top, my email address. Let me know anything I can do to help you. All righty, folks. Well, good night. Be safe. And on October 9th, I have my new and latest webinar. So tune in for that, folks. And God bless you all. Take care. Good night.